Hi everyone, Jeff here again for VIP Vision. In this video, I'm going to be going through the device initialization wizard for the VIP Vision NVR8 Pro 6, VIP Vision NVR16 Pro 6, and VIP Vision NVR32 Pro 16P 2 network video recorders. Now essentially this is what we're going to do the first time we plug the unit in. I'm going to show you how to configure the NVR for the first time. These are just the bare basics of the recorder. I'm going to get you to the point where you have internet access and you can access the unit remotely and it has some cameras um, appearing and recording on the re unit itself. Um, some things that, that I'm going to assume before I start this is that you've got the recorder connected already. It's connected to a monitor, it's connected to your cameras. Your cameras are plugged into the PoE ports of the recorder itself and um, that it's connected to a monitor, you have a mouse plugged in, um, and you're presented with the setup screen or the wizard screen. Now, with that, I'll just jump across and I'll show you what that screen looks like. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the recorder. This is an NVR8 Pro 6 that I'm gonna be showing you on, but as I mentioned, it does also apply to the 16 Pro, 16 Pro 6 and 32 Pro 16p2 recorders. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see here is we're going to be prompted to enter a password. Now this password must be at least eight characters in length, uh, up, to, up to 32 characters in length, but at least eight characters in length and must contain letters and numbers. Okay, so um, keep in mind that whilst it's good to have long passwords, you're going to have to type this in every time you want to do anything on the recorder. So it's a good idea to kind of keep it complicated but short. So in this case, I usually like to pick two words. Um, and a number at the end or a number at the start. In this case, I'm going to put it at the end. So the words I'm going to pick are vision and man and one for the number. And confirming my password, vision, man, one. As you can see there, um, I'm not using a particularly complex password here, um, but it's not too bad considering uh, what this is going to do. It's not going to be touch such a bad password. Um, prompt question here. Uh, you'll be asked for this in certain situations on the NVR. I suggest you just put something basic in here. So I'm just going to put Jeff in so that I remember that. It's not used for recovering your password or anything. Just leave it. Put it as Jeff or whatever you want to do. So the next question is, uh, next thing we need to do is set up our pattern password on this recorder. So this, this works similar to how um, a number of Android phones work, how you can enter a pattern rather than having to type your password every time. So this helps if you have used a long password. So this is only usable on the NVR itself. There's no access via the app using this, so feel free to make it um, as easy or as complex as you'd like, providing your NVR is in a secure location and then people don't have physical access to it. So in this case, I'm just gonna draw a U. Um, now, if I get it wrong and I don't draw the same thing again, say for instance I miss something, it's going to prompt me to do it again. So I'm going to draw the U. Keep in mind that it is possible to skip as well accidentally. So just make sure that you're going through all of the digits that you expect to be going through. Now we need to draw it successfully twice like that. Great, so now it's done and now my pattern password's set. So the next thing that's very important is setting up um, your password recovery settings. So that's what's happening here. Now you can uncheck both of these, but I strongly suggest that you don't because if you do forget your password for whatever reason, it's gonna to have to come back to uh, where it was purchased from for us to reset it for you. So in the email address, pretty self-explanatory, I need to set an email. So I'm gonna set mine, Jeff, at vipvision.com. Now, once you do this, keep in mind that you can't actually change it, so make sure it's correct. Security questions. So, I'm going to have to set my security questions now. If for some reason I don't have access to the email anymore, my security questions um, will work instead. So, security questions, pretty self-explanatory. You've probably done this before for a number of websites, but let's pick something. So, obviously, keep in mind these are all things that you need to set for your customer. So if uh, we want to put our customer's email address in here, again, we want to use our customer's password back here in the enter password section and have them set their unlock patterns. Um, in here, we're going to use their email address and their security questions. Okay, so in this case, um, I'm going to select, uh, what have we got here? What was the color of your first car? My first car was red. What was the name of your first? Boss, let's say, first thing I learned to cook, P, 
pizza. Name of my favorite fruit. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's put that there. And of course, it's got to be mango. OK, so those details are set. And I'll click OK. Great, so the unit beeps and just lets us know that uh, those settings have been configured and we've got our username and password set up. Now, as I mentioned before, I was expecting that you'd already have your cameras plugged in directly to the recorder. So NVR 8 Pro 6 and NVR 16 Pro 6 will only have their cameras connected directly to the recorder. The 32 Pro 16P2 may also have cameras connected via an external PoE switch. Um, that's sort of outside the scope of this. We're only gonna be showing you how to set up cameras um, that are plugged directly into the recorder. I'll go through that in another video. So enable auto detect. Now this is actually automatic upgrades. I suggest that you leave this checked. It will notify you if there's a firmware update available. Um, it's just best practice to leave this turned on. Right, so the device name, you can change this if you'd like to the household name or something like that. I would just leave it at NVR. Device number, leave that at eight or 16 or 32, depending on your recorder. Uh, language is set to English. Obviously, you, you can change that depending on the version of firmware. If you uh, do have a site overseas, we can sort that out for you. Instant replay. Now, this there is another video showing how to use the instant replay functions. This just to, changes the amount of time that the unit is, caching, unit is caching instant replay footage. So leave that at five is usually the best. Auto logout. Um, this is how long it takes before the machine will automatically log you out of uh, a session on the physical machine itself. So if I'm connected to the physical machine doing playback or something, and I walk away for a period of 10 minutes to go get a drink or something like that, uh, it's going to log me out and ask me to um, enter my password again. So you can configure that here. You could make it a minute or 60 minutes up to you. Now, there's this section here called monitor channels. So while I'm logged out, I may want to be able to view all of the cameras or I may want to not be able to view any cameras. So in, in here, um, you know, uh, I can actually configure which cameras are viewable when nobody's logged into the recorder. So by default, they're all turned on. But if for some reason you had maybe a back room, a staff room or something like that, or an office where you didn't want anyone looking at the NVR to be able to see without first logging in, you can uncheck it from this section here. Uh, on this recorder being an eight channel, we have eight of these. Um, you could uh, obviously you'd have either 16 on the 16 channel recorder or you would have 32 on the 32 channel recorder. So I'm just gonna right click to jump out of there. IP camera time sync. So what this does is it just changes how often the IP cameras um, synchronize their time with the recorder. The IP camera time is actually very critical. Um, if the IP camera time is out, you will find that your recordings start to drift. 24 hours though is, is usually fine. Make sure you leave it checked though. The navigation bar sometimes helps people when they've got multiple monitors plugged in, being able to switch between them and configure the multiple monitors. You can use it on, on machines without multiple monitors as well, but I tend to find it gets in the way. So I would suggest that you leave the navigation bar unchecked. Uh, mouse sensitivity, uh, this just determines how fast my mouse will move across the screen based off um, you know, how, how far I need to move the mouse to make it move a distance across the screen. I would just leave that at default as well. Okay, click, click apply for that. Now we want to move across to our date and time settings. Now our date format, all of this is set up in another video, but I will just go through what I would normally set. Okay, so I would say um, Australia, typically you want month, month, day, day, year, year, year. Uh, it depends on, sorry, let me start again. Day, day, month, month, year, year, year. Depends on where you are or the preference of whoever, you know, your customer, whoever you're installing it for. Time format, 24 hours. I typically leave it in 24 hour mode, but you can switch it to 12 hour if you prefer. The date separator, typically in Australia, we would use a slash, but again, you can change that to whatever you would like. System time in here, leave the time alone. Just make sure that you set the time zone, okay? Set it without daylight savings time if you are in an area that requires daylight savings time. So for instance, in Sydney, I'm gonna set it to GMT plus 10. I'm gonna save that there. You will see that the time will now have changed. Um, if we do have daylight savings time, you wanna actually configure that. So in Sydney, I would select I'd turn it on and I would say in the first week in October, first week, first Sunday in October at 3 a.m. I'm gonna go back an hour and the first Sunday in April at, whoops, sorry, at 2 a.m. I'm gonna jump forward an hour. The first Sunday in April, I'm gonna go back an hour at 3 a.m. NTP, now this is the network time protocol server. So this is where your recorder will get 
its date and time settings from. You can leave it at time.windows.com, that's no problem there. Um, sometimes, you know, if you do have a time server on the network, you can set it to that. In larger sort of corporations, they typically have their own time servers. I would just leave it at time.windows.com. If you do have any problems with that, um, you can change it to something like a time.nist.gov if for some reason time.windows.com isn't working for you, but I'd just suggest just leave it there. Most networks, that will be fine. Make sure you click apply just to make sure that none of the settings are changed. Now in a holiday section here, you can actually add holidays and then the recorder will uh, do different things based off the information that you specify in here. So it could switch between um, scheduled full-time recording versus motion recording, that sort of thing. I wouldn't worry about it, not too many people use it. Okay, the next important section is TCP IP settings or your networking settings. So in here by default, we're set to 192.168.1.108. In the vast majority of cases, we're gonna to need to change this. And again, in the vast majority of those cases, you're going to be selecting DHCP or Dynamic Host Control Protocol so that we can get an address automatically. So I'd suggest you come in here and just tick DHCP and click OK. If you have a recorder which has multiple network interfaces, you can actually set them up here as well um, to fault tolerance or load balancing. You will have to configure the switch to do that, uh, the network switch that you've got them plugged into. I'd suggest you just leave that at default with a single network interface. I'll go OK. And uh, great, so that's fine. Leave our DNS settings alone unless you need to change them for the network that you're on. I think that, that works in the vast majority of cases. These are actually Google's DNS servers. You'll see at the moment we haven't yet got an IP address, but that's not a problem. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is click next. Now, um, what you'll see in here is after I click next, those settings that we just said before will have been saved. Now, this is easy for IP or our P2P settings. Some people know it as. This is your remote connection to your phone. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this enabled. As you can see here on the left, we have cell phone client and SN is the serial number that you actually need to scan with the app. So what you would wanna do here is at this point, you'd wanna pull out the app and to pull out your phone, open the app or install it if you haven't already installed it and scan this code here to get it on the phone. Um, if you do have any questions about that, there is another video that we have showing how to configure a, an MVR for the first time um, with the serial number here. So, um, we're just gonna skip ahead here and go next. Okay, now this is gonna show me all of the cameras that are currently connected to this recorder. As I said before, this is an eight channel recorder. I've currently only got seven cameras connected to it, um, but they're all gonna show up in here. Now, if I wanted to add any other recorders, let's say for instance, I was on a, um, if I wanted to add other recorders from the network that weren't connected directly to the recorder, I could do that from here in device search. Um, this is particularly prevalent on the, on the MVR32 Pro 16P2, since this has 32 channel, is a 32 channel recorder with only 16 PoE ports. Um, however, other than saying you can select them from here and click add and have them come up down here. It's a bit outside the scope of this quick video, so I'm just gonna leave that alone for now and click next. So the next section here is where we can figure our general recording, motion recording, alarm recording, recording, motion detection, uh, IVS, etc. Now, um, as it is out of the box, this recorder is set to record full time um, without motion detection. It's recording all the time. What I'd suggest you do is um, actually select motion and copy motion to all cameras as well as your general recording. So motion ticked, click all, and then drag across, apply that, and then copy it to all cameras and click OK. What this is gonna do is now, the recorder is actually going to flag motion detection as well as being recording full time. Um, so I'd suggest you do that. Other things on this page here, um, this is our channel selection obviously for our, our stuff here. Pre-record, um, that's to do with your alarm events. Leave that set at four seconds unless you have a reason to change it. ANR stands for Automatic Network Replenishment. This is where the recorder will actually retrieve footage from an SD card. Um, if for some reason the recorder was down while the camera was up and recording to the SD card, so it will pull the footage back and slot it into the recorder itself uh, in the timeline. You can enable that there. Uh, if you don't have SD cards installed on the cameras, there's no point, you can leave that alone. But if you do, you might as well enable it. Check the box. Click apply to make sure those same changes are saved. In snapshot here, this is actually taking um, still images. Um, it can be used for things like time lapse. I'd suggest you just leave that there unless you have a, just have a reason to change it, just leave it alone. 
finished. Okay, great. So now we're finished and everything's configured correctly. At this point, if I select right click and I click search, I should now be able to select some of my cameras. And there you go. We've got recording. So it's done. As I said, that's, that's just the bare minimum uh, settings for these recorders. There's a lot of other things that you can go into, but these are the settings that I'd suggest that you start with um, on any installation. Just run through the uh, device, device initialization wizard. Um, from there, you can always move into things that are more complicated. So, you know, you could add tours, you could um, change scheduled settings and things like that. But use this as a good starting point. Um, Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like this video, please, please click the like button. Uh, if you'd like to see any more things on this channel, leave a comment below. Subscribe if you think these videos have been useful to you. And yeah, thanks for watching.